Hello viewers, SuperGT here. Welcome to Formula E versus S-Class. So yes, I'm going to take this car, tune up a little bit to the top of S-Class and see what I can do about the online lobbies. Here we go then, Road Atlanta, the first race, starting from fifth on the grid. And we're driving the Formula E car, so a glorified kettle basically. Going into turn one, the pack has already disintegrated as well half the pack was involved in a massive pile up and I'm up into sixth place there we go look at that and then into the apex of the fast kink literally this guy comes flying out of nowhere kills me and himself annoyingly so we're going to lose a lot of time there and a few positions and another one going down into ninth place now this track road Atlanta now we've got that very long straight at the back which is not going to help me at all. This car has absolutely shocking top speed. Like, the top speed is just awful. My nan could run quicker in a straight line than this thing. I think it tops out at about 140, whereas my nan can do about 190 in a straight line. So, you know, there's, there's some work to do in the Formula E. And you can just see there, there's an example of how much time I lost. I was right behind that car, and then at the end of the straight, about a millennium later, I'm I'm just so far behind, a couple of light years behind. So that is going to be the main weakness, the main problem that I have to overcome. I really do have to make the most of the corners. It's very solid around the corners, has very good brakes as well. But it's the straights where I am going to totally suffer. Now coming through here, this guy is just going to come back onto the track. And at this moment I realised that my death is imminent. So... Half a second later, there we go, bang, dead. Most ridiculous rejoin ever. And then I turn around, and then he actually he just comes in for another 90 degree rejoin. So obviously, couldn't quite get enough. And then he actually turns around, maybe to do another 90 degree rejoin and smash someone else's life into oblivion. But there we go, just a typical day on fours of six. So I've gone up into eighth place, not the best overtake I've ever done. Um, a weird smash as someone comes onto the track. But yeah, there you go. Sometimes they're like that. Now, this is the last lap, lap number four. Catching up with this guy in the Nissan. And I think he's treating it more as a drift session. So, I mean, do what you like, really, I guess. It didn't really slow me down too much. So I'm going to go through up into seventh place. Uh, plenty of people leaving. Only ten people left. So I'm only going to, I'm only going to beat three people. But there we go. Through the final turn. And it's going to be a seventh not too bad, but we could do better. And we're going to try to do better at Watkins Glen. So let's go off the line. Into turn number one. 17 players in this one. Ferrari already off the track. Coming through the first turn. I've got through fairly clean. Not everyone has done. Now I just want to focus you on this guy. On the left hand side in the skyline. Because, well, just watch. I mean, he just, just come flying back onto the track. And actually Karma has struck because he actually wiped himself out only so good stuff there I was a little bit hot behind the Mustang there just giving him a couple of nudges through the S's but um, not enough to really do too much to him maybe I probably helped him if anything now this is where you can see the weakness again F50 goes flying past just drops me and leaves me for dead this Audi R8 probably could have gone past as well but obviously decided against doing it and then uh, there was one guy off there that turn coming towards the downhill turn five and Moses effect is gonna be deployed here as you can see just press the button on my controller I've mapped it to RB so I can just press that RB button everyone crashes quite convenient really I've just gone straight through from ninth to fourth it's a very good button actually I'm level 99 Moses so um, very very useful that one so going straight up into fourth place now this is where I really just have to nail those laps now, nail the corners, and just hope that the people behind me start battling a little bit, a little bit more than they should. If they were clever or wise, which most of them aren't, but if they were, they'd start working together to try and catch me up. But um, we all know that that's not often the case in this game. People are just going to start fighting. I mean, it is a three-lap race. They have about five more minutes left to try and catch up with me, which is quite a long time, really. Five minutes left and they're only a couple of seconds behind but um, we'll see I guess so I'm in fourth going across the line at the end of lap one 
just behind the Mustang and then towards the end of lap number two you see here the gap was fairly similar on the very long straight at the back I was struggling the straight I was just on there not too bad because the acceleration speed onto the straight was fairly good so it took a while for the other guys to start gaining on me down that straight and now you can see through this kind of section here these long winding corners it really does suit this car actually uh, this car's just got phenomenal grip and it just doesn't really slide around too much I forced this guy to go defensive he probably didn't really need to because I probably wouldn't have lunged for that but I'll go around the outside up into third place but uh, of course the power of that Mustang gonna come flying back past so I have zero chance of defending that one so into the first turn a little bit well, it looked like I was going to go a bit wide there, but I didn't. As he's nailing the apex, you can just see how good the car is through there. Now, through the S's, easily flat out in this car. I mean, it's not going to be going too quickly in a straight line, so easily flat out. Then onto the long straight, no chance against the Mustang at all. So, towards the end of the race, turns out the top two guys had an incident there. You can see the full GT just rejoining the circuit. So, I've actually gone up into third place. And if I was a little bit quick on that, la on that last lap, I might have got second, but uh, unfortunately not. Third place on the podium in the kettle. How the hell have I managed that? Really not sure. Now the next race, what I was dreading, the rain. I'm really not sure how this car will handle the rain. But we're about to find out at Silverstone National. Six laps around this shortened version of the home of British motorsport. In the rain, of course, that is typical British weather. And once again, I've deployed the Moses effect there, going straight up into 13th place, gaining about eight or nine positions. Nice stuff indeed. Now, this is what I call the true first corner because this is where the carnage normally kicks off. And let's see if it does it. Yeah, a couple of guys into the barrier. Early doors, Maserati MC12 coming back across. No drama there, just go to the outside of him. And there's going to be a drag race down this long straight. But this is where I'm going to get left for, de uh, left for dead multiple times. Well, six times in this race. Six laps. And then into Brooklyn. The guy behind just opting to stay behind. A couple of guys wide. Gaining a further two possessions up into sixth place. Big puddle on the inside there. Which the uh, Maserati actually decides to go through. Not a good decision really. You kind of just want to treat that puddle as the edge of the circuit. So you just do not want to touch it at all. So up into fifth, and it's a similar situation to Watkins Glen. I just kind of have to get my head down and just go for it and gun these corners. Now through this corner here, Cops Corner, the car is just so so planted, even in the rain. I think the rain doesn't really seem to affect this car too much. Uh, if, if I went through the puddles, I think it would, but um, just I, I know where they are, so I can just avoid them. And then actually a little bit deep into the right-hand turn there of Beckett's, I believe. And then on to the Wellington Strait. So there's some pieces of debris there flying off the car ahead. As we come flying down the straight, just going over 130 miles an hour. It's just so diabolically slow, this car. And the sound as well. I mean, it's really, it's just hard to drive, not being able to hear anything. Well, you can hear just a very monotonous little drone. That's about it. Um, not much to hear, really. I think the, the main thing you can hear in these races is the other cars. You can't really hear your own car too much, which makes it hard to judge when you need to change gear, actually. Now, I've actually got an Alpha 33 now. Ultimate noob car. Um, trying to get past, and I'm just going to have to go a little bit wider there to try and get past this guy. It's not quite going to materialise, though, as we go into Maggots one, once again. Lap number three now, and he's going to go very early. I'm going to go for that cutback. And it's a nicely done little move there. Audi up ahead now. I'm almost certainly going to lose that position once again. Actually, he's actually dropped a fair amount back. I'm not going to go defensive though, because I think that would just slow me down. I'm just going to take the normal racing line. Just hope that he doesn't break too late. And he hasn't done. He's actually braked nicely on time. And so have I going for a nice uh, late apex there to give me a good run through Luffield. The Audi goes very wide. I'm going to give him just about enough space before cutting across to take my position. There's actually going to be a boost there. So thank you very much for that. Helping me help me out a little bit as I go down the straight. Obviously lacking that power. There he goes. He actually comes flying past. But no, I'm not quite going to be overtaking there. As you can see, nicely around the outside, resuming my third place. But we can go one better here. 
because second place is just ahead of us and we still have three laps left to try and dispatch him it goes in very deep and once again similar to the last lap I'm going to go for that cut back it's not quite going to get there because as we can see here he's just going to get that speed differential going and then there's nothing I can do um, apart from maybe tuck into the slipstream and gain 0.0001 of a second probably not much to be gained to be honest but then we are closer on this lap to him than we, are, uh, than we were on the previous lap so we can still try to turn the tide of this race into our favour as we have just about two laps left to go in this one my main aim here is trying to be that Alpha 33 if I can do that and I think that guy is banned from Forza 7 you know, to the first turn. And through the, there's a little puddle that goes all the way along uh, the track, all the way across the track as you enter. can make things a little bit tricky. But in this guy, it actually felt fairly planted through there, so not too bad. I think the downforce is very good in this car. So as I said, I mean, or I was saying that this car wouldn't be very good in the rain, but actually it's not too bad. I think it, it has so much grip that it kind of just, just handles it really nicely. But, uh, the puddles of course but that's true of any any car you don't really want to go in the puddles the Alpha getting very close not opting to go for the move into Brooklyn's but I do make a very big mistake there he's going to pull along to my left hand side there he is and he's on the outside now so I'm just going to hold a very tight line to make sure he can't do the cut back I have a feeling here that as I go down the main straight or the old pit straight there's nothing I can do as he goes flying around the outside it's not my there's not much I can do about that to be honest so one lap remaining what can we do about getting back onto that podium Let's see the Alpha actually not taking the best line through there actually had to take evasive action going a little bit wide and then into um, Maggots and Beckett's once again the load is very wide it's going to be a drag race between the two of them the best I can hope for now is really that they wipe each other out but they have been driving fairly solidly so far and that might not be a factor really but this corner here can spring up some surprises with late braking but not on this occasion these two guys they've got it fairly sussed out by now we are on the last lap they've probably got their braking points down will the alpha though be able to get into second place though before he gets to the line maybe we shall see actually goes very wide there and almost spins out if he did, I might have got that third place. But it's going to be a fourth place, which I think is actually very good. In an 18-car lobby, not too bad. The car just lacks overall power, but it is actually not too bad to drive overall. just has great grip. So there we go. Formula E, not too bad at all. Probably won't be driving again too soon because I do like to have a bit more power. But uh, there we go. Hope you enjoyed me driving a toaster around for a while. Let me know if you did enjoy, as always. And do subscribe if you're new and would like to see more. Hope to see you in the next one. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.